Hey, Dan. Daniel, how you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm in Switzerland, so that's why this is a good time for me. Ah, Switzerland. It's a, yeah. it's a great place. Yeah, it is. I love Switzerland. Well, are, you, are you in Zurich or are you in Geneva? Yeah, in Zurich at ETH. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <sighs> yeah, I've, I've been to that complex systems group. That's a great group. I mean, the, um, in the social sciences, so I'm, I'm, I'm working with people to, who specialize in, in intellectual property and oh. economics. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. That, sounds, that sounds really exciting. Economics is part of the deal. Yeah, they're very interested on the issues of open source. In fact, I don't know anybody in the um, real um, software engineering side of at ETH. So. <clears throat> but yeah, it's interesting. So um, we have been talking a lot about um, the issues of how to measure um, value in open source. Oh, that sounds like an interesting discussion that uh, maybe you want to take some leadership of the value working group. Value working group. I'm not sure I know because what they, so one of the interesting aspects of the work that the economists do is that they want to observe natural experiments where they see an outcome. So it's not like us that we say, oh, you can go and measure this, you can go and measure that. For them is that, yes, it measured, but my purpose is to determine whether there's a difference between before and after. I see. That's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> so in this case, we'll be like, um, um, how can they observe a natural experiment where they can see whether the natural experiment create, uh, um, was affected? So whether there was a change and whether that change is reflected in the metrics that they have. So they can argue that the change is good or bad. Oh, that sounds like it would be interesting to try to keep track of. Yeah, I think that from the point of view of the project of the project's goals, and um, and I think we we talk about this when we were at Shona. Is how do you measure value? How, sorry, how do you how do you determine that the metrics that you have are measuring something that is really significant? Mm -hmm. And um, and are measuring what you want to measure? Right. Um, I don't think that the objective is to measure commits. I don't think that anybody's interested on in saying this. These are the number of commits. I think that what people are interested interested is to know whether there's activity and that activity is significant. Yeah, and, and I imagine some of the unconventional or newer ways of thinking about that in terms of how the software is consumed as well as produced would have to be part of that, right? Yeah, we were talking, for example, today about how do you measure um, that a project has impact? Exactly. And, uh, in some cases, then you can say, well, it's number of downloads, but then there are projects that have a very small niche that do not have the same kind of customer base that another larger project has. Right. Then you have the projects that are uh, invisible to the, to the final user. Uh, think in terms of libraries. So how do you measure the impact of libraries? So each one of them has different metrics that need to be taken into consideration based on the particular domain where the application is. Hey, uh, Daniel. Yeah. We've been, um, we've been creating a, uh, what we call the V index, which is similar to an H index for libraries. Mm -hmm. That's, that would speak right to that. Yep. Sorry. You're familiar with the H index, right? Citations of citations. Yeah. So, um, even if you did that, so let's assume that, um, you create a very specialized library that is extremely good at what it does. Compared yeah. to, for example, a very generic library like Agile. So the generic library will have way more citations than the other one. Yep. Well, let me put it in a different context. It's, it's the same as in papers. If you work in an area that has a lot of people interested, you get citations. You might be doing revolutionary work in an area that nobody cares, and you might never get cited. So we, um, we've developed our scripts to actually measure um, the downstream use of libraries and then the secondary use of those libraries as well, if you want to take a look at it. What, what do you mean by secondary? 
So it's just like the H index. So the H index is based on the first order of, of citations. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I cite your paper, but then okay. the, the H index is also concerned who is citing my paper. So it's transitivity of the dependency. Yep, exactly. So we've created a V index that does just this for libraries. Okay. Yeah, I'll be interested. And then what ecosystem did you, what ecosystem did you, did you track? So we we're right now taking a look at the Mozilla ecosystem and we're going to do it for the Linux foundation as well. I'd be happy to share those results with you. Yeah, but uh, when you talk, when you say the Mozilla, you mean the libraries that Mozilla, uh, the Mozilla Foundation projects use or the projects that the Mozilla Foundation hosts? The former. Um, okay. It, the it, no, it's the latter, sorry. The ones that they host. It's the ones that they host. And what, when you say the Linux Foundation, the Linux Foundation doesn't host many libraries. Um, but we can, we can track down the projects through GitHub in terms of so I mean we have to we have to go are you familiar with libraries io libraries.io no i don't know about it that sounds like um uh so i'm just actually going to the url there yeah <laughs> muting my typing yeah i muted your typing yeah i feel you Sorry. Yeah, sorry if I accidentally unmuted somebody. I think I unmuted. No, I was, yeah, I was. Uh, okay, this is cool. Um, that's actually a nice way to start this <laughs> the session. Yeah. That was Interesting conversation. How do we get to be productive right away? Boom. Yeah, right, exactly. What started out as a casual conversation turned into something pretty interesting. Uh, all right, cool. Um, I had a few kind of items on my, my, my thing. Um, we have the Open Source North America, Open Source Summit North America, right? And that closes the, in 12 days is when the call for paper closes. Correct. We have uh, five different things that we can do. Uh, just a regular presentation, a panel discussion, birds of a feather, which we've done in the past, a tutorial or a lab. So the, the presentations themselves are 50, five zero minutes. Uh, the panel discussions are also 50, five zero minutes. Uh, birds of a feather about an hour we've done those like we said before and tutorials are up to two hours and labs are up to four hours so I mean I think at least from my perspective um, kind of an obvious type of submission is either around diversity and inclusion again similar to what we did at the leadership summit or around the stuff you're doing Sean with growth maturity and decline starting to get that one that, yeah. work, that work group going. And so I think either, either one can kind of follow a structure of, again, here's a brief overview of chaos, a description then of the work group of interest in this presentation. And then I think it would be nice to talk about the technical advances that are being done around DNI or growth maturity and decline. Or, or both and it, I wonder if those like in both cases like in the case of growth maturity and decline I think those are the things that we've understood for the longest uh -huh. um, in terms of diversity inclusion I think those are the place that's a place where we're going to have to be creative same with value so yes. those are those are two places where we could bring people in for almost a, a tutorial and treat the tutorial more like a hackathon where we're not necessarily showing them the way, but we're showing them our, our au revoir of approaches. <clears throat> yeah. Um, that's just an idea. I mean, I'm not married to it. It's just a thought. Yeah, I mean, the tutorial, I, I, think, I think the tutorial would give us a lot of that ability to kind of be hands-on with the two hours in length. If that's what you're getting at. Hackathon it is. 
Okay. It is. Yeah. I, I'm muting myself because the background noise, but. Okay. Um, so do you think we could still follow kind of the same overview or the same structure that would be like an overview of, of chaos? I mean, we've been doing that overview quite a bit now. I think yeah. we would graduate a little bit. So, and then talk about the growth, maturity and decline or diversity and inclusion work group. I don't think we'd want to do both in one tutorial. No, we wouldn't want to do both in one tutorial. They could be separate tutorials. I, I do wonder if we should just have a, if we should have a chaos overview, kind of maybe somewhat advanced or developed from last year, of course, because we've advanced and developed, but. Well, I can do I, the overview in the tutorial, no problem. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I suspect there might be an audience for just like a first timers trying to one interested in gaining familiarity with it because it was introduced last year in Jim, yep. Jim's talk, but it, it, that was new to people. So nobody had been thinking about it in all likelihood in advance of the, the meeting. And now that we've been around for your, and I'm just hypothesizing, I don't know, but maybe people there, maybe there's a group of people who are sort of peripherally aware of what we're doing and might like to know more about it. Yep. I, or maybe I, not. <laughs> no, 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 I'd be happy to do that. I think my, my only hesitation was the, the presentation is 50 minutes and I can only talk about the overview of chaos for like 15. I don't need well, 50 minutes. But I, I, think, a, I think that's okay because, I mean, I don't think anybody wants to listen to a 50 minute talk ever. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think 15 minutes in a conversation is probably productive, but, that, but again, I don't know if there's an audience for that. Well, it'd be cool in the tutorial because then it would be the overview and then say, let's get to a little bit of work. I think the presentations yeah. are set up like an audience. Mm -hmm. They're set up to just kind of receive information for yeah. 15 minutes. So do we do a BOF that's more general as well? Because I think some people might be unwilling to commit to a four hour block. No, uh, the tutorial's one and a half to two. Okay. Where did Which I get four in my head? Is there something that's there's four? A, there's a lab. A lab. Four. Yeah. Okay. I don't really know. I think well, once. As, as far as I know, the tutorials are mostly practical. If you look at uh, those of other years, it's like uh, sewing a technology hands on, usually. So maybe, on. I mean, there, there are different formats, you know, but, but usually what people expect is I'm, go, I, I'm coming here to learn about the technology. From our point of view, maybe that could be. Uh, how to get the metrics or how to interpret the metrics or something like that. I mean, can be semi-theoretical the, from the point of view of if we come to growth maturity and decline, for instance, it could be like, uh, this is the way you can interpret these metrics for your uh, project or stuff like that. Uh, talks are usually mostly like uh, some people are speaking, can, can have the format of a panel, but it's mostly not for getting feedback from the audience, but for talking to the audience. Of course, you can have questions and answers, but my impression is that what people expect is I'm going to sit down here and I'm going to learn about something in 15 minutes, well, maybe 30 minutes and then a discussion or something like that. But, and the, 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 mostly, uh, the most interactive format is the, 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 the words of a feeder. So those are exactly what you said. So let's talk for five, 10 minutes and then let's keep with the audience, let's discuss, let's produce something together. So maybe we can do all of those. I mean, we can submit the proposals and then they can accept them or not. So we don't know. So, uh, and I think in any, in any case that there is room for something related to, of course, diversity and inclusion, but I don't know if Danny is already working in that with, with the rest of the people in the working group. But maybe uh, seeing Matt and, 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 and myself could try to focus on growth, maturity, decline, and uh, commit to do something. Because, you know, having the talk is also motivation for having something to talk about. Yes, know? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good forcing yeah. for the end of August. So maybe um, what I could do is maybe, what about a birds of a feather session for chaos in general? No, I think that would be cool and, uh, and could be a way of talking together with everybody. And since it is the day after uh, the chaos cone, we can basically try to bring more people in after the experience of the chaos cone. Okay. So think, mm -hmm. And then we could submit a tutorial around growth, maturity, and decline. I almost wonder about, and I guess in my mind, I had framed it as a lab because I think, I think Jesus is, I don't know, but what Jesus said kind of resonated with me that people probably come to a tutorial to just get something laid out for them. 
and I don't know that we have things that are in such a state as that we would lay them out. I think okay. we have things more in a state where we would want folks to explore what we have with us and adapt it and try some things and that that would be more than an hour and a half in all likelihood. Okay. Well, I mean, I that, that's what uh, Daniel did at the chaos or that the um, open source summit in Europe last year, I think was a, was a four hour, what's it called again? Lab lab. Yeah. 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 Is that right, Daniel? Was it a lab? It seemed like it lasted four hours. Um, you mean me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we met in that room on the second day, where mm -hmm. we had a whole bunch of, and we had kind of overviews of all the different tools like Biturgia and a, a mm -hmm. few others, which mm -hmm. names I don't recall. Was that was that a lab session or was that a tutorial? Uh, well. Uh, it was kind of a small room up to, I don't remember, 20 people at most. Yeah. It was um, longer than an hour and a half though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was at least four hours, but then okay. we right. prepared some kind of agenda, I remember. And right. then we had some presentation about chaos, and the metrics and the software. Um, and then we had a specific session about the tools, the software, I mean, so GH data and Grimoire Lab and, mm -hmm. and Prospector. I mean, so, so when the people, so, so, so some hands on. And then the very last slot was focused on diversity and inclusion. Yeah, so I would say at least four hours, but we we were not at the very beginning in the, the schedule. So it's it seemed like we had the meeting room pretty small in any case. So, yeah, so was, maybe that was an special arrangement, arrangement by the Linux Foundation for us or something like that. Not in the call for uh, proposals, I think. Yeah, it was kind of that. Because the idea, or at least the very first idea, was to have some, uh, 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 at least as far as I remember, but well, uh, some other people were, were there, definitely. No, I, I'm, I'm saying because as far as I know, there is like the open call for proposals, which is what um, Sin and, and, and Matt were, were talking about. And there are special arrangements that the Linux Foundation can organize if they want. And that, that comes from meetings. For instance, the board meeting uh, could be something like that. But can also be sort of seminars or, or stuff like that. And I think that this thing that we are talking about it was this kind of a special arrangement. Yeah. So if you want to do something like that, maybe we can talk to Rai directly and ask him, uh, we'd like to do this. Is, is, is there a way of doing this or, or something like that? Hmm. Yeah, last year we had missed the call. And so that's what uh, Kate organized okay. for us a room. And it was not even on the schedule, it was just yeah. out of. Okay. Mm -hmm. But maybe we can aim for something which is in the open call and see what happens with it. Yeah. Because in the end, it's also about, I mean, it's the decision of the Linux Foundation in the end. So if they find it interesting, mm. they can accept it. So, and I think that at least one talk we should have. Tutorial is very likely more difficult because they are longer and they are expected to be more specialized. And uh, as I said, people are expecting to learn about the technology. And as uh, Sen said, Maybe we still don't have materials for doing that uh, in a way that uh, most of the people coming could be interesting because we could do that, but very specialized. And if it is very specialized, that's the people are going to be interested. Okay. But, but for a talk on, on growth maturity decline, I think that from now to then, we could be having more a specific uh, uh, explanation of the different metrics. I'm very likely two implementations, the one that uh, Augur has and the one that we have with Grimoire Lab. So yep. that we could, we could deliver, most of the talk could be about the metrics themselves with this new schema. Hopefully during the next months, we are going to go through all of them and we can have a more comprehensive schema of all of them together. And, uh, and then we can apply the software to a couple of projects and use them as, as use cases and try to explain how they can be interpreted in that context or something like that. And it can be three or four of us. So, I mean, uh, sharing the states so that people don't get, don't get too worried of uh, listening to the same people, you know? Yeah. And, and it could be a kind of a panel, an informal panel on, the, on, on growth maturity decline metrics or something like that. And including everything from the description of the metrics to the implementation to maybe a use case or two use cases. Or, That's a great idea. Yeah. So let me, would that okay. be in a lab slot? Do you think, Jesus? Or uh, I would. I would submit it to the to the uh, open call for talks. Okay. 
and uh, and we can also discuss with Kate and Ray if you want to have something like a like lab, maybe for people more interested in this, or even a tutorial if you want, because the, the same thing that we propose as a talk could be extended to a tutorial, but I, I'm not sure that we have material for two and a half. Okay, okay, so let me just get this straight. So I would submit a birds of a feather. I'll put together a birds of a feather for chaos in general. This is just for okay. people to come together and talk about. Yeah, yeah, tech. okay, that's, that's great. And then we would put together a presentation, a 5-0, 50-minute presentation, mm -hmm. which would be, again, a small overview about chaos and then really honing in on growth, maturity, and decline, demonstrating the technologies of Grimoire Lab and Augur, to show how they represent the existing sets of metrics and then possibly a use yeah. case yeah. associated. And we should find an interesting name, like, I don't know, applying metrics to know about the health of a project or something like that, so That's that the people is appealing. And, uh, and then even when we are going to talk about cows and our metrics and all of that, try to frame it from a more general point of view so that people can get more interested. Okay, I can, so um, why don't, I will take the Georg and I, I'm going to speak on your behalf. Sure. He and I will take the charge on kind of putting these two together, both okay, the okay. and the presentation, and then I'll share them with everybody. So, okay. okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's great from my point of view. Okay. So uh, uh, maybe, maybe we are going to send to a presentation based on Grimoire Lab and the, and the new things that we have. And that could be something related to, I mean, could include some of you if you want to. Yeah, because our main idea was to show what, how Grimoire Lab has changed during the last year from a technological point of view, what staff can be done with it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it sounds like you've been doing quite a lot to evolve Grimoire Lab. Yeah, that, that's the idea. So try to show how you can do a lot of staff with it. But Tim, if you want, we can also include a part of our group as a complementary view of doing the same staff. That depends on you. I mean... Um, I, you know, I'm open to, I, I certainly think that would be uh, helpful to get that feedback from a group. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm totally fine featuring um, Grimoire Lab and just showing Augur as another way that things are implemented. And, um, but I think, you know, by that time, I expect that Google Summer of Code will have helped us have yeah. Augur connecting to things like Percival and <laughs> maybe even an evolution of Percival along the lines of the uh, some of the thoughts I shared with you over the weekend. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I think maybe you and I can work out the details on that part of it as the summer. Uh, so if you want for, for the talk, I can produce um, 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 materials for submitting it and I can send it to you. And if you want to include something or we can include later, I mean, if it gets uh, accepted. Now I could put something in now for the proposal stage. So. Okay, great. I could do that. Yeah. Okay. The premise of this talk? It would be mainly uh, our original original idea would be about about Grimoire Lab and the, and the new staff that we have with it. If Shen uh, joins, could be like uh, the software projects that we have, and in this case, mainly Grimoire Lab and uh, an Augur, except that somebody else wants to talk about something. Okay. So, and I think it starts. This is the same presentation that starts with the brief overview of the chaos project as a whole, right? And then it dives into these details. Is that? Am I just tracking correctly? Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, uh, we should be talking a bit about chaos, but the focus would be the software and what the software does. Okay. Uh, of course, we can try to do some marketing for chaos as well. But the main idea, from my point of view, would be: look, this uh, Linux Foundation work group is producing this software, and the software could be interesting to you. So it could be very technological, and just just explaining. If you happen to have some project that you want to analyze, you can use this software, and that's the more lab and Agur from different uh, perspectives, right? And it could be the idea. Okay. From my point of view, if if that's okay with you, of course. So I think this is, it's a presentation about Grimoire Lab and Augur about the new things that are happening in the respective right. technologies. And, and, and how to use them for analyzing and stuff like that, yeah. But uh, well, the main difference with the other talk would be that the other talk would be mainly focused on growth and maturity and decline as a model right. for estimating the health, while this talk would be in general about software for analyzing software. 
which is different. I mean, the focus is way different. Okay. So going back to the first presentation, I like the idea that Jesus, uh, you mentioned about having having a panel -like session. Because if we set it up where we have uh, three, four people sitting at the front as a panel, so we actually submit a panel, then it's much easier to fill the 50 minutes from different perspectives and keep it engaged. And then we have different experts talking about different aspects about growth, maturity, decline. Uh, someone talking about the challenges, uh, someone talking about the software needed, uh, someone talking about the interaction between the work group and the committees. And mm -hmm. everyone brings in their own perspective and it just keeps it more lively and engaged, I think, as a yeah, panel. Um, I agree. And it would be maybe like three minutes of this panel and then open uh, for questions of the audience. And if for some reason there are no questions, we can interview ourselves in the panel. So. Okay, so we, uh, the panels have an explicit call um, from the Linux Foundation uh, that all male panels won't be considered. So we'd have to think about um, just who we'd like to invite to be part of that panel. Sorry, can you repeat? Yeah, so the Linux Foundation has a explicit criteria that all male panels won't be considered. Okay, uh, we can um, we can include people from chaos depending yeah. on what we want to talk. All We're male anything. panels should be avoided. Agreed. No, but that's that's fine. But what I mean is, if we are going to include, for instance, use cases, mm. what we can what we can do is to have somebody from say OpenStack come into the panel and explaining how they are doing this kind of stuff or how they can do it with the chaos software if they want, or how they are thinking about applying this. Yeah. But that's, that's just an idea, so I don't know if that, if that could fly. Yeah. I know the, that uh, Ildiko has been a strong voice for um, the use of metrics and how they could be abused, so that is an interesting voice to include in this panel, okay. and if she's willing to be part of it. So another thing could be, instead of trying to focus on uh, growth, maturity, and decline, try to focus on how to analyze um, the projects in general. And somebody could talk about this model, but Ildiko could come and talk about how they are doing it in uh, OpenStack with uh, Stack Analytics, for instance. And maybe we can find somebody else from other projects explaining how they do that. So that we could maybe show a combination of how are, we are structuring things in chaos, and how people are doing in other projects, and even have a live discussion at the end on how to mix both things together. I don't know, just, just, just to be more inclusive, not only from the gender point of view, but also from the point of view of other people doing analysis for their own projects and stuff like that. So have representatives of different work groups, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, people who is collaborating in, in chaos, like Elico, but who also have their own uh, let's say, experience in their projects, like OpenStack in her case, for instance. Something to think through, because if we just have different work groups that are their own separate ways of thinking about project help, we have to find a way to m talk to each other during mm -hmm. the panel. So yeah. that's something to think through. Yeah, and, um, for me, one of the things that I really want to make sure that we submit in, in one of these talks or the birds of a feather is, is this idea of how the work groups are bringing together the metrics and the software. And growth, maturity, and decline is just, it's a point of, of focus that's doing that or diversity and inclusion is a point of focus that is doing that. So I, I, I do wanna keep one of these talks really honed in on one of the categories just so we can demonstrate that relationship. Yeah. Well, thank you. That would be easier with a talk, I think, because it should be more structured because it would be like explaining how we work together and how the work group is producing staff and all of that. So I don't think that can fit the panel. The, the idea of the panel, you know, is more like discussing different points of view and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. what, you are, what you are saying, Matt, is maybe mostly like 
So in a structured approach to how to work with metrics. And that would be more like a talk. And maybe maybe we can stick to that and do both. I mean, have the panel if some other people in Chaos want to participate and convert it into just how can we work about metrics from the Chaos point of view, including other projects and stuff like that. And the talk could be specifically how we intend to produce metrics and software in uh, in uh, in Chaos. Okay. And use use the growth maturity decline as an example. Hopefully, for now, for then we have uh, something to show. And the talk could be on chaos, mostly on how we structure the work and the and the work group itself, and then the results. The results could be the metrics and some software, so something to show, right? So what about um, it? I like that idea because that that uses growth maturity and decline as a use case to illustrate yeah. our software. I, I think, and I don't know if Daniel's interested in this, but it would seem perhaps that the Mozilla group and the folks involved in diversity and inclusion may want to have a, a separate session that focuses on those metrics that, and, and the metric, you know, so this would be a talk about the working group focused on growth maturity and decline with sort of a lean towards the software mm-hmm. and maybe, and I'm just, I'm assigning you a thought, Daniel, and you can just tell me to bugger off, <laughs> but you know, maybe there's a, a diversity and inclusion one that could tilt more towards sort of wrestling with how we define those metrics, which I think is, we know is more difficult. Hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, when, when you were discussing all of this, I was, it, it came to my mind this idea. Um, let me know what you think. So it's, if, uh, let's say we, we, well, we are part of the Linux Foundation um, and there are people interested in the things we are doing in chaos from several perspectives. So value and, and growth maturity and, and mm-hmm. inclusion and so on. Um, what if, uh, we try to have, uh, I don't know, let's imagine we want to help all of the community managers in the Linux Foundation. So can we have an open call for all of the community managers so they come to the same room and then we try to have all of these discussions together and not just perhaps for a 50 minute talk or panel, but kind of a tutorial. So it, it's going to take longer and then we can focus on each of the key areas. So we help them uh, in the sense that first we let them know how this all works so we can have an introduction to the several topics we have. But then we basically sit down with them and try to understand their needs. So we so we basically bring new requirements to yeah. build for a metrics perspective. Right. Yeah. I think that's brilliant, actually. If we could, if I don't know if it's possible, but if we could get a bunch of LF community managers in a room and lock the door, um, I, think, <laughs> I think that that could be great. What do you think, Matt? Uh, no, I, I loved I loved it. I think I'm thinking of the logistics of how we get these community managers to agree because I think it's a, a brilliant idea. Well, we we tell them they've won a fabulous prize, but they have to show up for a brief talk in order to win. <laughs> <laughs> um, Timeshare marketing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the. Uh, Danny, I mean, the idea is great and in the tutorial, I mean, I'm wondering if we could put together a tutorial without necessarily securing the program managers from the projects or the community Mm -hmm. managers from the projects, but really kind of targeting them as the the audience. I think one of the things they ask is the target audience Mm -hmm. or the tutorials or the presentations, that kind of stuff. And we could put efforts in really recruiting to attend that tutorial to the managers between April 29th and August 29th. We'd have plenty of time to do the recruitment. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I think it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably we need some help from Rai or Kate or some other people from the Linux Foundation and from the other uh, communities or companies that are around. But, uh, I don't know, so, so the real risk is basically that no one is coming to the tutorial. Uh, that may happen, of course. Um, but on the other hand, if we are, I, I'm. By the way, I have to say that I'm, 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 I'm still not sure if I'm going to Vancouver. So, uh, okay. We, we will see. But in any case, so we are. Um, so Matt Georgson, Jesus uh, Manrique, and some other people from uh, from Chaos. So if we count the number of people that we are, we are perhaps I don't know six, seven, eight people. 
So we can help definitely others, um, even perhaps not focusing on community managers, but um, I don't know, open source offices. It's probably one of the uh, usual targets for chaos, definitely, or um, engineering teams, or, you know, so there are a bunch of people interested in, in all of this. Is the general premise of the tutorial trying to determine what people care about as community managers? So the primary goal of all of this, I would say, is to enrich the information we all have and we are all dealing with uh, in chaos. Um, the more people, the more different uh, profiles we may have, the better. Um, so the final, I mean, I would love to have at the very end of all of this kind of a list of requirements, list of people interested in this topic and that we can contact later in somehow in, in chaos so we can bring more people to the discussion and produce more useful things for them and for the community. But okay. it's hard, definitely. Um, people, I'm sorry, but I have to leave now. I look later at the, at the details of, um, of the summary that we produce, right? And I talk to them. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, so let me add my comments. And, yep. um, I think that many of you have already given presentations in similar um, venues. So I think that um, there is a dissonance between expecting uh, information from the participants and giving information to the participants. Um, my feeling is that it will be better if some people will be doing interviews or if people study by finding the people and talking to them directly and expect them to come to a place. So I think that it will be very valuable that before you submit it, you really define what the goals of the presentations or the tutorials are. And uh, because I, I suspect that, as, as, as Daniel have said, um, it might be that you have a, a tutorial and then nobody of the people who you expect they shows up. So uh, in my opinion, I think that the biggest value of the presentations is um, just to uh, diffuse what you have. I think that in that respect, you have already done that several times. So um, I think that um, what you have to enumerate first is the goals and then try to to um, build your presentation based on that. But I don't have high hopes that a presentation can get people attracted. And, and the, um, the panels, I think that the panels are the least attended unless it's high uh, visibility people. And um, those are the ones that people tend to avoid. Okay. Wait, so the panels are the least attended, you think? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Unless you have a person that is really is really no, uh, known and, and uh, or there's a topic that it's it's major it's it's major at the time, then I think that people tend to avoid it because it's just uh, people yapping with a particular goal. Okay. And I think that's that's the real risk of having a panel. Like unless you have a very clear message that you want to convey, then it tends to be relatively fluffy. Okay. Cool. Good points. Uh, all right. Well, I um, I think w with all of this conversation, I'll still we'll put together the, the a potential presentation around the growth, maturity, and decline category, and I'll I'll lay this out. I don't I won't spell it all out again right here, but it'll the document will speak. The birds of a feather have been really nice over the last several conferences, so we get great attendance in those. So I'll, I'll put one of those forward together or put one of those forward. And then it sounded like Sean, you and Jesus had a potential presentation about um, Grimoire Lab and Augur for new things that are happening in these technologies. So, so, so maybe we have three and I think we should yeah. all take, I mean, um, oh, go ahead. I have been, I mean, I'm sitting here thinking that I really feel like a lab might be a worthwhile endeavor, but that's fine. Maybe you're really think about that. But Jesus could turn it. Well, well I think I, the presentation with Jesus and the chaos intro, that's one item. I think the lab is a separate item that maybe I'll think about and socialize with this group. Fair enough. But I, OK, 
okay, cool. Um, and then really, I think taking uh, Daniel's last points to heart is to really thinking about what type of engagement uh, you expect from the audience. Right. <laughs> who you actually think will actually show up. Uh, and just really trying to be real clear on to what the goals of the presentation or tutorial or lab are in that. I think those are points very well taken. Cool. Uh, that Ooh. was great. I think that um, uh, your what, last year. I would add, what yeah. I would add that you recommend is the following. It might be more effective to chase people so use the conference not to present, but to find people that you want to talk to them. Oh, sure. Yeah, we do that kind of constantly as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about a methodological way. So you can actually create an empirical study where you have uh, in, uh, uh, formal interviews with people that care for this. Uh, that's yeah. also good. Yeah. Uh, Daniel is here though. I have a question for you. Do you know if the <clears throat> Diversity and Engagement Summit is co-located or co-hosted again? Yeah, uh, so what they are doing this year is instead of having an, uh, a day, a full day after the, uh, well, the summit, uh, what they are doing is to have this through the summit. So basically there is a track for diversity, for the Diversity Empowerment Summit. Um, it's going to be uh, led by Nitya, uh, Nitya Raff from Comcast and Nicole Huseman from Intel. Uh, so both of them will be working there. Um, yeah, so did I answer the question, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you think uh, the diversity and inclusion work group um, can be represented in that track somehow? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's something that I, I wanted to, to say that uh, uh, typically during the last, well, couple of years, well, even before, um, so uh, Nicole and me and Niti and others, we've been sending some talks about diversity and inclusion, either presenting results or and so on. So typically, um, Nicole seems to feel really comfortable with panels. So... Uh, around specific topic on, on diversity and inclusion. And then there are some people discussing about the topic in, in the panel. So she's either uh, the moderator or active participant in the panel. So this is one of the usual ways to proceed. So where the information is presented and, 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 and so on. So this could be uh, another way of presenting the results we have in chaos and opening discussion. Um, and the other way is basically to present uh, results in the sense of having a talk, talking about uh, chaos and specifically the working group for diversity and inclusion. As I still don't know if I'm going there and I'm having a meeting with Nicole in, in the next uh, in, in 15 minutes, I guess. Uh, I will let her know. Um, Matt or Hugh Georg or some, someone else is more than welcome to... Uh, to join, uh, let's say that the potential talk or the abstract for for uh, for Vancouver. So, Georg, you've been actively participating in the group. So, if you want to join us, it would be great. Yeah, I think I think that uh, would be good because what I've seen in the past uh, was last year and at the North America was there was a lot of engagement in this diversity and inclusion track. Or mm -hmm. the, and maybe that is a place where we can um, recruit new participants for the work group, advance the work, or do something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the only thing I'm afraid of is that, uh, uh, well, I have attended some diversity and inclusion talks in OpenStack and in the Linux call, well, the open source summits, previous editions. And uh, if those talks are in between the usual talks, people tend to go to other, uh, to other slots instead of this discussion. Uh, having the Diversity Empowerment Summit, summit during the very last day got a really great attraction. I mean, uh, I remember uh, in Prague it was around 50 or 60 people. Yeah, um, was, was yeah perhaps, right? And in LA, uh, perhaps kind of that. Um, while I was presenting some other talks about giving numbers or attending other presentations, we were hardly 
15, 10, 20 people. So I don't know. Let's see. But definitely, we I will I will push Nicole to send something definitely, and then I will I will let you know, York. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. Cool. Um, I think okay. I think that's moving forward. A uh, couple other things. We've had some webinars. Did Jesus have a webinar today? Yes, we had a webinar today where he Jesus presented on the Remore Lab, the general structure of it and how the data flows within the different pieces and then produces the reports and dashboards. Okay. So it was a 10 minute uh, webinar with about 10 minutes of uh, Q&A afterwards. Good. And we'll post the video Sean, did you post your video? Yes. Okay, I'm still the only one that hasn't done it. <laughs> I'll do it, I promise, at some point. Uh, all right, cool. So the, I think those are rolling. I think we've got the, um, let's see, Daniel German, would you ever want to run a webinar talking about Cricket? Uh Sure, I can do that. And, okay. um, so why don't, why don't we talk in May when I'm back? Okay, that sounds good. Uh, if you haven't picked up, they're pretty low overhead. They're like 10 minute of, you know, kind of how to use the tool and then any questions that people might have. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, great. Uh, and then my last, my last thing that I had on my list was uh, the Google Summer of Code. I think we're done as far as I can tell. Well, we've got people, but I think the next step is um, Jesus and I, and I think there's some other mentors probably need to talk about organizing the specific tasks for the oh, summer. Yeah. I think it starts like on Monday where they're going to be expecting some orientation to our project. So Jesus is probably ready for that, but I need to take some time to get ready for that. How about this? I think I think my, my done was that we have selected students. We're done with okay with that part <laughs> so uh now the real work begins. yeah now the real work begins <laughs> okay well so i do think can you kind of keep me posted i think there's a mentor stipend if i recall no is it a billion dollars because i could use a billion dollars it's, it's google so i was figuring they just launder that through something no. I'm a tax. Think of me as a tax haven. Google. Uh, I will not tax. The stipend, the stipend goes to the organization. No, and the organization I, decides what to do. The, I know the organization, the Chaos Project. I think it's five hundred dollars a student, but I think there's a separate mentor stipend on there. Yeah, so there's a stipend. Uh, so I have been a mentor in the past. There's a stipend. Yeah. So the big question is, somebody. So. Um, this creates, so depending on who receives the stipend, it creates uh, taxing um, issues. Yep. And uh, Google only pays one person with the stipend, one entity. Right. Okay. It will not distribute it across all the different uh, individuals. Is that so, per student or is uh, that for the entire? Person, so if we have two students, for the, for two all the mentors, one for both students. All the mentors. So if you have five mentors, then all the mentor money goes into that. At least that was the case when I was a mentor. So uh, that person then has to take care of distributing it and then accounting for that. So it might have implications with respect to your income. So that's why some projects create, uh, also have a non-for-profit. And, uh, and there are some non-for-profit that uh, have taken uh, as an umbrella for some projects to be able to handle this. The Software Conservancy is uh, the best example. And uh, perhaps actually in this case, the Linux Foundation can take that money. Yeah. Uh, now, in, I mean, I don't, I'm not doing this for the money. Um, and I imagine the stipend is fairly modest. You know, if it's 10 grand, visit it. <laughs> I think $500 per mentor, if I remember yeah. correctly. It's changed uh, since this day. Oh. And, uh, but I think it's important that you understand um, how it's been distributed and the impact that it has in the taxing of each individual. And if it can be funneled through the foundation, perhaps the new foundation, this can give uh, seeding money for something else later. If okay. They, okay. If the mentor, uh, I agree. I agree with that. We were just we were just looking at the dollars, and I think I ha I think I have some clarity here. So when I was submitting the the chaos proposal, they asked for where they would send 
the mentor stipend, which is $500 per student developer. Yeah. And so that, I set that up here at the University of Nebraska Omaha. That's, I don't have any problem with that. The intention was this, that we were gonna use those dollars just to fund chaos related projects. Then there's a $2,200 mentor summit stipend, which would be obviously $2,200 for the mentor to go to Google headquarters for their summit, which is in whatever, huh. September or something like that. And so that's, so Sean or Jesus, if you wanted to go to. Is it one of those, is it one per student or one for the whole organization? I'm not sure. Uh, my, my, my recollection, at least uh, the two years I was a mentor is that this is for the organization and the organization decides how it wants to use it, whether it's one person or different persons. And so Google just basically gives the money and then it's up to the organization to do it. Okay. The issue so, that you might have with respect yeah. to the to the stipend is yeah. that from the point of view of, of Google, it's received as income. They're paying they're paying a salary. So that has also been a challenge with respect to this. They, just, they had just asked for the where they would send that five if I recall, I'd have to go back, but where they would yeah. send that Five hundred dollars per student, if that's what you're talking about, Daniel. Yeah, we, yeah. We had just set it up here at the university as a you know nonprofit. But remember, so at some point you have to give an, an account, so um, it okay. has to be accounted. So uh, the university, if you do it through the university, has to be involved, and then you get into all the issues of, of taxes. So just, okay, just keep that in mind. That has always been the big challenge. We'll do. I can do that. Okay. I just I just shared a link about the mentor summit. It's not on the it's not scheduled yet, but they have October as a as a holding place for it on the timeline. Okay. Um, and then they it looks like they get five hundred dollars for the students to also attend the summit. So, like I'm I'm yeah I mean I don't know who the other mentors are besides Jesus and I, but I think Jesus and I are probably going to do a, the bulk of the mentoring. Yep. And I'd agree. be fine if, if Jesus is able to go to the mentor summit. I'd defer to him since he's got farther to go and it's harder for him to get to North America than for me. Okay. Um, for the stipend and then we just figure out if it's worth it for me to go and I pay my own way or if that's not if I'm not even invited, that's fine too. I'm but I'd give Jesus for right a first review refusal since the twenty two hundred dollars would go farther for him than for me. Okay. Cool. Right on. Okay. Uh, you, can, um, you can go. So if you're a mentor, uh, you can go. You don't have uh, you don't have to have approval. So um, any mentor wants to go, if they're willing to pay, they can go. Okay. So the scholarship is yours, Jesus, if you can use it. Or Jesus left, but so it's easy for me to say. <laughs> <laughs> you're being uh, if, I yeah. if I remember correctly. That, 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 that I, uh, so I, I only went once, and uh, Google pays for the hotel separately. So it's only for the transportation that that money is supposed to be used. Okay. Well, then, then it definitely makes sense to have a European person like Jesus take advantage of that $2,200. Yeah, I, I think that um, it's interesting to go. I, I, I think that once you go once, you don't want to go back because um, Google runs it very independently of Google itself. So um, you get into an area where you cannot go into Google at all, and um, and then you talk to uh, the, the students and uh, the people managing GSOC and nobody else. In fact, there's really a big wall between GSOC and uh, and Google. So uh, Google itself, as an organization, doesn't track who the, the 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 mentors or the students are. So it's part of the privacy policy. That's interesting. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, all right, those are my um, those are my items. Where we have about four minutes. If somebody else has something they would like to bring up, I don't. I have to run myself. So, okay, okay. Um, talk to you all next week. Okay, yeah. and I'll Sounds see you good. next week, Matt. Later. Later. I'll, I'll see you later. I'll, um, I'll see you later this afternoon. Actually. Yep, I will. All right. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. So
figure out how to hang up. Governing board meeting. I don't know. Ray would know. Ray kind of heads those up. So. Just because of the. Um, I'll put that on my notes. The change for the code of conduct. Oh. Maybe you can vote on it via email or something. I'll ping Ray on that. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, all right, everybody. Have a good rest of your week. And we will chat soon. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye.